In this video, we're going to talk about creating videos and live video for social media. So as you read in Chapter 7, videos can have a huge impact on engagement with your audience. So there's some key statistics from EliteContentMarketer.com's article, 39 plus video marketing statistics you need to know. We're not going to go over all of these statistics in this lecture, but I included the link here for those of you who are curious and want to look into it a bit more. I encourage you to go ahead and check out that article. Uh, but some of these statistics are that most people would rather watch a video than read an article to learn about what a company offers. Now that's most people. Um, that doesn't mean all people, so that's why you know things like blog posts are still important. Why do they like this? It helps people discover new products, brands, ideas, even when they aren't necessarily intending to buy in that moment. It positions your brand as a helpful expert and answers people's most common questions and enables people to take action and even purchase with a seamless immediate experience. So there is a lot of great things that can happen. You can make sales from your videos. Video ads are effective in helping customers discover a brand and make a purchase. Despite this, many people skip online ads when given a choice. Just think about every time you've been on YouTube and skip ad pops up. How many, how many times do you hit skip ad instead of watching it? Um, but Posting videos to your social media accounts instead of buying ads may be more effective. So um, maybe instead of taking out a YouTube ad, just open up a YouTube channel and post videos on the YouTube channel about the services or products that you offer. Okay, so four in five people also use digital video for learning new skills. And I think, I mean, we've been kind of thrust into online learning this last year, but it is true that working professionals would often rather learn online through videos than take an in-person class. And FYI, for you guys who are um, in school, earning a degree isn't the end of learning. All right, sorry to break it to you. Once you get that degree, it's not over. Learning is a lifelong pursuit, especially if you want to stay relevant in your industry. Okay, so Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram are the top sites that businesses are posting videos on and by a pretty huge percentage um, you can see here Facebook is number one so there's a lot of videos being posted there YouTube Instagram Twitter LinkedIn and then it falls pretty quick after that now live video has really taken off in the last few years and about 89% of social media users stream a live video at least once per day. I'm sorry, once per week. So from the graphic above, we see that, this graphic here, we see that Facebook is the number one place to post pre-made videos, but people stream live videos from YouTube more than Facebook by nearly 30% more. So this is huge. If you are really into making live videos, um, Facebook's also up here, as is Instagram, but YouTube is really where people go to stream live. All right, so go ahead and pause and read this article from HubSpot on where and how often do customers watch live video. Find out more about the features and advantages of these top sites and see example of live videos and you'll get some tips on what type of content works well on these sites. There's some things, um, for example, Twitch, I don't know how many of you guys are uh, know much about Twitch, but Twitch is huge for video game streaming. So if you're into video game streaming, you want to be on Twitch. Um, but, you know, there's also some on YouTube, but it's not nearly as pop popular as on Instagram. So knowing the type of live content you're giving out will also help you narrow down where you really need to be up in here. Uh, so go ahead and pause this video and take a moment to read this article. All right, so from reading the article above, you learned that one of the benefits of doing a live video is that instant interaction with your audience. 
as you're streaming, your audience can make comments and ask questions that you can read and answer right at the moment. And this also points to the fact that educational content is the most watched live content. If you can demonstrate that you're an expert by answering these questions in real time, it can really boost your brand and instill trust and confidence with your brand. So what type of live videos are most likely to watch if you see it on one of your social media feeds? Uh, people answered a Q&A with an influencer, celebrity, or expert in your industry. Okay, so people want to learn more. They want to know what you know. A product tutorial. So again, that's another type of learning. An educational how-to video or explainer. And the last one, a video stream that shows someone playing video games in real time. And even this can be considered educational in a way. It could be educational for other people who are playing that game and want to see how other people are playing. So we as humans love to learn. We are curious and our live content is showing us this. Okay, so pause this video again and read HubSpot's article on which types of live video are people actually watching. There's a lot of great eye-opening facts in there. All right, so now that you know the types of content that capture viewers' attention, you need topics to make your videos about. So these can be the same topics that you brainstormed for your blog posts. In fact, you can use one topic to create four types of content. You can create short form video, which is typically 30 seconds to 10 minutes long, blog posts, long form video, typically over 10 minutes long, or do a live video stream. And or, I should say, do a live video stream. So how can you use one topic for all three? It kind of comes down to the amount of detail that you give your audience. So short form video is going to be using video footage or slideshow format to convey the main points. This is going to be what you're going to be working on for your final project. You're going to break down that blog post that you wrote and you're going to break it down into the main points in order to create a short form video. Blog posts go into more detail on your topic and you can also direct audience to other resources, especially links, um, other bloggers who are covering similar type of um, content and stuff like that. Long form video, um, you can pack in as much or more detail as your blog post, but in an even more visual form. So this is going to be more of like a lecture or uh, really breaking down something and giving a whole bunch of detail and really showing that you know your stuff. A live video stream, much as much detail as long form video, and you're able to interact with your audience in real time by answering questions and responding to comments. Okay, so the quality of your videography is dependent on basically the same tips I gave you on taking better photos. Um, you need to have good lighting, you need to be eye level or have interesting angles, eliminate background distractions, and you can also add context with what you are including in the frame. Another important factor for making videos specifically is planning. You will save yourself a lot of time and energy. Trust me, if you write out a basic script with the details for how you want each shot to look like, um, and another word for this that you might have heard is storyboarding. This is what they do for major productions, whether it be a TV show or a movie, is just doing some basic planning. If you just, um, First of all, it can make things a lot easier because you're not as nervous like, what the heck am I supposed to shoot? Just take some time, plan it out, and it'll make your life way easier. Planning is even important for effective live videos, and here's some examples why. So Q&A. If you're doing a question and answer session, first of all, obviously, hopefully, you know what you'll be talking about. After all, people are coming to you because you are the expert. And when I say expert, you know, if you're just starting off, it doesn't mean that you have to know everything. Maybe it's just an expert in you and your business and your brand. You know, being able to talk about your values and what you're about. You are an expert in yourself, so you can totally do a Q&A just talking about what you do. Um, also, another tip is write bullet points for the main ideas within your topic and brainstorm possible questions and think about your answers. 
So of course you can't be prepared for every question or comment, but this will help avoid awkward pauses and help stay on subject. Um, especially if you know if you think you're going to go on a live Q&A and there's just going to be all these people on there asking all kinds of questions. Maybe there will be, but especially if you're just starting out, that might not be the case. So instead of sitting there staring at your screen waiting for someone to ask you a question, uh, you can just start talking about what your main topic is already. Um, and if you happen to get someone on with you, uh, sometimes on some formats you can do like a dual screen type of format. You can, um, and the person starts maybe taking over or getting completely off topic. It can be fun for a while, but having those bullet points in front of you can help you get back on the topic. All right, and then product tutorials and educational videos. Rehearse. Nothing is more embarrassing than trying to show someone how something works than it doesn't. Um, I do this for these videos. I have to rehearse a couple times and obviously I still make some mistakes. Um, nobody is perfect and that's okay. In fact, leaving some of these mistakes in can make me a little bit more personable, I think. Um, but, so here's a funny, <laughs> I don't know how funny it really is, but speaking of being embarrassed when trying to show you something that doesn't work, let's watch this quick video. And we're actually going to come up here to this moment. We have uh, Elon Musk showing off his bulletproof car. Sir? Yeah. Oh! Fail! That was a little too hard. is not what was supposed to happen. And I don't understand how they didn't practice that beforehand and know that that was going to happen. So, um, <laughs> like I said, no matter how small or large your company is, make sure that you are uh, rehearsing before you start doing any type of live demonstration, whether it be in person or live video, because this was streaming live online. <laughs> okay, so although making videos can seem intimidating, the best tip I can give you is to just jump in and start creating. And even if you don't have the best equipment, it's okay. Many, many YouTubers start off with their phones and gradually invest in more better gear. This might be like, okay, I start off with my phone and realize I need to get some kind of tripod. And then you realize, well, the lighting kind of sucks, so I need to get better lighting. And then you get a ring light and realize that ring lights are getting played out. And so you need to get some LEDs, uh, video lights instead. I mean, things will continually keep changing. One of my husband's favorite YouTubers eventually hired his own videographer to follow him around while he worked on cars. So um, another important aspect of this is don't just jump in and just start buying a bunch of video equipment because you don't know exactly what you need for your type of videos. And if you just throw in a whole bunch of money and then you realize that that's not what you needed or maybe, I don't know, maybe video doesn't work out for you. Maybe it's not you know, exactly what you need for your social media presence. Um, you would have wasted all this time and money uh, researching and purchasing equipment that you don't actually need. So, like I said, just start off. Just make a simple video. Um, my first videos are pretty bad, I'll admit, <laughs> but they are starting to get better and better. Um, so anyways, that's my tips for making videos, and don't be scared of this next project. Um, I've eased you in with the last project, and uh, you will get plenty of time to work on it. And first and foremost, when you're making videos, try to have some fun. <laughs>